Hey, I'm back. I haven't really been gone anywhere. I just haven't been doing videos for about a month now. Uh, I, I had a lot of repotting to do. It's actually the most epic repotting session that I've done ever uh, in my 20 years of doing bonsai. Uh, I think I did around 200 plus uh, repotting pieces this year. Some of them in uh, nice bonsai pots, but most of them as pre-bonsai and many of those getting their very first root work ever. Um, so it was a lot of work and I really just needed to shift my focus to, to get those done uh, and not miss my window for repotting on those. Um, a lot of those are also very big pieces and some of them are kind of small pieces, uh, but the big ones were sure a lot of work. Uh, it was definitely a lot like um, really just moving around a piece of firewood. It was, you know, a big chunk of, of wood um, and then the uh, field soil that they were in was really heavy stuff. So how about I just take you on a little tour, um, show you what I've uh, worked on, some of the pieces that are waking up, some of them that I'm not sure are uh, waking up just yet, and some of my, um, some of the ones that I uh, really enjoyed doing, and maybe a couple of new things that haven't actually happened since I've been uh, messing with them. So let's go for a walk. So I repotted both of these. Uh, the one on the rock is actually a trident maple over a rock, and that one I had gotten a while back, and uh, I did some, some work to the roots, simplified that a little bit, uh, simplified the canopy just a little bit, and it's in a wooden grow box. So the one next to it is a viburnum, also in a wooden grow box. That one was from the ground a while back. This is the base of a big uh, bald cypress. Not a lot of high hopes for this one. But it's my first bald cypress that I've ever worked on, and I'm not really seeing the growth out of it that I had hoped. So I might have been a little bit uh, off on the, the potting for this one. I might have done a little bit more to the roots than it can handle. Uh, also, it may not have been wet enough. Maybe it dried out a little bit. In any case, it's a cool tree. If it comes back, um, then I'll be happy about it. Some of these little ones I actually didn't touch. Like this one with the broken pot. And all these seedlings I didn't actually touch this year, or this one behind it with the uh, red purple leaves I didn't touch. Um, I'm not really known for doing air layerings, but these air layers are Katsura tree air layers, and they're actually coming out pretty well. And this one in the front is a um, Japanese maple. It's actually three Japanese maple uh, pieces that were in a forest. And I dismantled the forest several years back, and I decided that I was going to do something a little different with them. It turned out to be a lot different. I went uh, semi-cascade with these, put it in a uh, Iana Glushach uh, rock container. Pretty cool. It was actually sold, and uh, as soon as the buyer is ready, it's going to go across the country. So, it's exciting stuff. Start moving through here, and... You can see a little bit more going on. Uh, a couple of Katsuras there. This one is a sand cherry. And I, I don't do a lot with flowering trees, really. Uh, cherries and plums and things. Um, but this one actually developed quite nice bark over the years. It looks very much like a purple leaf plum. And it has some really neat little white flowers white or a very light pink. Cool stuff. I have another one over here that came from the same um, pair of trees that used to be in the yard. And they they got a, a decent um, set of bonsai pots. They had never had bonsai pots before in their life. And they do have a lot of developing left to go. But I decided I'd just kind of go for it and see how they do. Um, the foliage is growing pretty well. It's flowered for the first time since I've gotten it into a pot. And I've had these in pots for the last three years. Just regular grow pots. And never saw flowers on them until this spring. So that's kind of an exciting development on those. One thing I have a lot this year is um, nursery stock that I started with, uh, such as this Stuartia. And this one in the back here are both Stuartias. And you can see that they, they're they decent. They have some decent growth coming out of them. But they don't really have a lot of form just yet. 
So I'll be doing a, um, a couple of um, sessions with those and I'll show you what I'm up to with um, trimming and shaping those. And beyond that I have quite a few field grown Stuartias with huge old bases. These are in cut down 50 gallon pots. So they are big and they look pretty much just like stumps at the moment. And in reality, that's that's really what they are. These were actually tall trees uh, last summer until um, they became mine. So I decided I was going to bring these into bonsai life. Yeah, I repot all of these things this year and had to take off a whole lot of heavy field soil, uh, work some thick roots. All right, that's one section. <laughs> I have another section over here. These are um, all Kingsville boxwood. It's quite a few. There's uh, something like 18 to 20 pieces in here. Uh, most of them not worked as, as bonsai just yet. Uh, these ones on the end that I did work through a little bit, I did take a lot of cuttings from these ones on the end. Kind of opened them up and um, you can see that this one on the side that's super full compared to the one next to it that has a lot of openness there's a lot of work that um, goes into uh, simplifying those into a, an interesting image and then they come up with tons of cuttings So more uh, field grown stuff. These are dogwood and I don't know what variety of dogwood these are because where I got these from they didn't have tags on them. This was a rescue from a bulldozer uh, just like all those Stuartias were. So my focus was just getting these uh, dug up and then this year I was able to work on the, uh, the roots enough, um, give them some, some good bonsai soil get rid of all of that nasty field soil. So those have a long way to go, but super awesome thick bases on these. Yeah, so that'll be fun. I have a lot of miscellaneous things over here. Some of them from my field uh, dig session, some of them collected here, some that I've had for a while. Uh, this big nursery uh, olive that I haven't worked just yet. And then actually, um, you may have seen these at some point. These are actually uh, Arborvitaes, Arborvitaes, sorry, I can't say that one. Um, it's a very different take on a forest planting. Just two trees in a forest, struck by lightning. This one in the back here, this is actually a Weeping Blue Atlas Cedar. And I had done the styling last year and it didn't appear to respond very well to the, the work I did on it. Dropped a lot of needles, a couple of branches died, it just didn't generally look very good. But this spring, there's actually a lot of buds popping open on this. So what I found with this is that uh, Blue Atlas Cedar tend to um, lose a lot of needles at different times and it can be scary they can look like they're just completely dying and that one certainly did look like that some of these I decided not to repot woof, woof. Uh, I decided not to repot this big U it just wasn't time yet I just recently did a um, styling on it I did give this little Shimpaku juniper a, a nice pot. Uh, this one I twisted up last year. Uh, I did a, a video on how far can I push a, a juniper. Um, push it pretty far, also thinned it out quite a bit. And it is responding with some, some back budding already. 
Let's see if I can get you a shot of some of the back budding. It's hard to focus in on this thing. Well, anyways, uh, there's a branch here that I'm trying to focus in on that um, actually there's no other foliage except for the back budding on it. Wow, the dogs are really interesting tonight. They're talking to each other. <clears throat> Had some hemlocks going on back over here. I did uh, give those some pots this year. A couple of them back there. Uh, I had done quite a bit of trimming on this uh, Inoki cypress over the rock here. And it's not really root over rock. This is just kind of laying up next to a rock because the, um, the roots were not all that great. But I had given this one quite a bit of a trim uh, this early spring to prep it for some, some open growth for the year. I know my, my background is not great to show this, but um, like I said, I have a lot of trees right now. And I decided not to move them around, but instead show them just as they are the way I keep them. Here's a, a scuffed pine. Uh, it's called Hillside Creeper. And this one's going to get some, some gin work. Sorry, some uh, deadwood work on the trunk. So it's a, a big, chunky, weird thing. I'm just going to highlight what it's got. And then a little bit different take on a large forest here. Uh, the answer is no. I can't turn the dogs off. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> So I had done a video last year, I believe it was last November probably, um, I had some some Japanese maples I was trying to grow from seed. <clears throat> so they sprouted about a couple of weeks ago. And you can see in this tray here, there's a whole lot of them in here. Um, I don't remember which ones these are because I didn't label them. But each one of these trays actually has several um, several little sprouting maples. Some of them not quite so many, like this one here in the middle. This one has maybe three that are coming up. That's not actually surprising. That one is uh, Red Pygmy, I believe, is what this one is. Not so many coming up out of there. And then this one on the end here has nobody coming up. That's a green cascade, and it's never actually uh, grown in the ground from seed that I've seen. So on this side, I have my maples mostly. Uh, not all maples, but this first section uh, is. These are also field-grown trees that um, I had done the first root work on this year. Some are going to be pretty amazing, like this uh, lion's head, Shishigashira. Got the uh, kind of green bark still on it, but it's going to uh, continue to develop, to develop that kind of um, silvery bark as it gets in the sun. It's got really tight growth, this one. Come on, focus. So you can see the, the small leaf size on this makes it really suitable for, for bonsai. It's got an interesting shape. Um, I'm going to let that be a tree. A little less bonsai, a little more tree. Some of the bases are, you know, they're a little bit weird. Like this one here in the front is, uh, uh, I'm not sure about that one. Some of them are just absolutely massive. This is a 50 gallon barrel that I cut down in order to fit this one in it. And you can see that uh, the root base on this that's above the soil it's pretty big. It's not leaving a lot of space for um, the edge of the pot there. And there's actually uh, roots under the soil that go all the way to the edge of that pot. So this thing is massive. It's also tall and it hasn't uh, sprouted just yet. 
some of the other ones uh, that I got from nursery stock this last year uh, people were really concerned when I did some work on this one and this is the one that I got most comments ever that said you should air layer and I didn't air layer it well I mean it's still doing okay just one in the front this is one of my favorite leaf colored ones here in the back and I I don't know the variety of this um, uh, this one didn't have a tag that I can actually read but it came out a beautiful orange yellow red sort of combination on the leaves I really like that that's a really nice spring coloring on that a couple of the exciting ones to me which I've never had before are these uh, Acer Japonicums which a lot of people uh, call um, dancing peacock so this one here in the front that doesn't have much going on except for a crazy trunk and this one here with really a cool uh, bridge type trunk they have a, a really different leaf on them it's uh, a little more fat come on focus now maybe I can get this one in the back there we go here's a shot of the, the leaf for you uh, Dancing Peacock, Acer Japonicum, Maiku Jaku. It's, it's just got a whole bunch of name to say. Uh, in any case, it's really neat leaf shape. They have amazing fall color, these do. Um, get the, uh, that combination of, of colors that uh, Japanese maple are known for, but all on the same plant. Um, anything from a bright yellow uh, with mixtures of green, orange, red, purple, um, just amazing leaves on those and I'm, I'm really excited um, to have actually three of those which I've never had before um, This one's Real interesting one. This one is actually a big dissectum and uh, this one I believe is uh, uh, I don't think it's uh, something with orange in the name, but uh, it wasn't actually labeled because it was a very old tree and it comes out like a green color that develops into this um, interesting red leaf. Very finely dissected leaves here. Pretty neat, and you don't see a whole lot of dissectums in, in bonsai culture, usually as ornamental trees. Some of the more interesting uh, red seedlings from my yard are, are back in here. Um, any guesses what's in here underneath that uh, electrical tape? Yeah, put it down in the comments if you can guess what was under there. Uh, some of these have just really interesting leaf shapes. Um, there's one in here that has more like a bamboo leaf shape, like a strap leaf, linear lobum type. Um, I'm not sure if they're all going to do too well. They they were just seedlings in my yard that I kind of dug up and they had interesting forms to them. Uh, <laughs> this one in the back um, was in my hospital area for a little bit. I wanted to see if it would sprout. It has not. So unfortunately that one I, I was not able to save. You can see on that that um, the trunk looks rather dead. And it is. Uh, it had one live vein that goes down to the uh, the root down there in the bottom uh, middle, and that was feeding the entire tree. So of course, that much root could not feed much tree, and eventually it was not able to feed any of it. So, yep, that one uh, I could make some space over here now. I guess sometimes we got to move on. So speaking of moving on, we have, uh, what were these called? Uh, snowbells, um, Japanese snowbells, which are very interesting flowers. Um, I'm not sure if these are gonna flower this year because these were also collected stumps uh, from the field last year, but I have a bunch of these things too. Just gnarly, these trunks. Other than the flowers, they do have some some just you know generally nice leaves on them throughout the year but the main attraction really is the flowers so 
So you can see on the ones that have uh, last year's growth on them, these long, um, long shoots, I'm just letting them grow the long shoots just to have something. Uh, the ones that don't have many other shoots are just not doing that well. Like this one right here, just had a couple of little shoots here at the top. Um, so I'm hoping to, to have, uh, with some nice new soil, I'm hoping to have some, some good growth out of these. They'll wind up having dead wood because a lot of the tops have died back. Um, I was able to get a couple of air layers. Um, not sure if they're all taking. Uh, this one in the front, the buds don't actually look that great on it. The one in the back has flower buds already. This little thin one here in the back. The growth at the top, I see flower buds. Um, I think I'm going to have to cut those off because that's a little bit of uh, extra energy spent that this one really should be focusing on root growth right now. Because it was just separated as an air layer last year off of a, a yard tree. Uh, then I have a whole bunch of yews here in the front, some Japanese uh, emerald spreader yews. I repotted all those. Um, this bramble of air layers here in the back, those were all uh, snowbells. I'm not sure they're going to take. I don't see any bud growth, so they may be toast, but I'll give them a little while. A little fur here in the front, and then this section over here I didn't do anything with. These were locally collected uh, evergreens, just roadside digs uh, that had been whacked down by the mower several times, and I just decided to <clears throat> uh, to keep them and, and try to use them as bonsai. They do have some interest to them, uh, like this one here in the front that looks like a snake coming out of that pot. That was actually uh, growing on a very steep slope, and I, I didn't think it was going to make it, but it's definitely got some new growth coming out. And then this one in the back that's got that real interesting shape. I had done a video on that one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's still doing really well. That one's an Arbor Vitae also. So there's that section up there. Um, I'd also put up a privacy screen within my yard here because I was not able to uh, put one over here by the, the fence. You see that road that I'm looking at over here? That has actually uh, got a really great view into this upper section of my bonsai. And I didn't really want to have that. Uh, but I couldn't add on top of that fence because it's against city regulations. So using my creativity I decided to put it here inside the yard which gives me a little bit more height. Protects the, the view from uh, all those cars going by. I'm also going to do the same thing over here because I have a lot of area that I uh, can actually do a similar privacy screen at the end of this uh, edge of this walkway here. A whole bunch of collected material down here. They they were potted uh, upon collection and I haven't done any work on them. There's vine maples and hawthorns in this section and most of them are these hawthorn. These are actually not native plants to Washington. These are not Washington hawthorns. These are actually English hawthorns. And these are considered a noxious weed here in Washington, which means that they grow amazing. And it also means that I don't feel bad at all about taking them out of the ground because they're not a protected plant in any sense of the word. So I have a good uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 22 of those. Uh, some of them real interesting, but um, most of them are just digs just to do something with. So, been pretty busy. Um, I have this section down pretty well. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit to the walkway and make that a little nicer. Um, I added a whole section of bench just for all those Kingsville boxwoods. And uh, it's a pretty decent section for me to work in now. Also in my greenhouse I have a whole bunch left that I haven't been able to take out yet because my other section is actually falling down. Just around the corner here I had a whole section of bonsai benches here and the wood had rotted over the years. I think I had that section up for about 15 years and so I just recently took that out. Doesn't look real pretty right now but it's about to be a blank slate for me to rebuild my fancy section. 
Um, I got some ideas for actually incorporating this vertical surface of the fence. Do some power washing to get rid of that old red stain. Probably going to do some uh, shelving on there. It'd be real interesting, something that I haven't done on that fence before. <clears throat> Might incorporate a little landscaping into here, but mainly it's going to be a display area for my nicer bonsai. So that's a project coming up that uh, I'll be able to show you sometime during the year. I was hoping to show you some really cool stuff with this sifter here. Um, but you can see all this debris on the ground. Uh, the sifter didn't work out. Rotary sifter, but I couldn't get the speed right and the tilt right, and it was just a mess. And I can't go losing all that material. So all of my sifting this year... Oh gosh. All my sifting this year... By hand. Um, that was rough. Sifting by hand this year... Oh gosh, I don't want to do that again. Okay, the greenhouse that you've seen several times in videos most likely is getting filled up with American Potter's uh, ceramic pieces there. Um, I do have several pieces here that uh, I just don't have space for out there yet. And it's still decent enough in here to have, uh, have these pieces in here. I believe almost all of these are deciduous trees. There's a whole bunch of quince that I have in here, um, several elms, a few maples, um, some azaleas, and a couple other miscellaneous items in here. So yeah, I gotta find space for a lot of plants still. I mean, this is... This is probably uh, enough to fill up a whole level of um, one of my outside sections that you saw earlier. And I actually have three levels out there. One good thing is I actually did uh, clear out a little space in here. This upper shelf that I have in here. Um, I actually was able to clear all that out and put that outside. That was all of the uh, Kingsville boxwood uh, basically took up all that space. But yeah, some really cool things with pots going on. Um, super excited to be getting some some pots that I'm really digging from American Potters. And I have a lot of things in the works for, for a lot of these pieces. A lot of character on these things. I mean, look at that range of uh, color and texture. Glazed and unglazed. Even some really weird things like this uh, crescent shape here that's going to be really interesting to um, make something for that. I even got my first wood fired pot recently, right here. So, yeah, really interesting stuff. So, uh, I actually did a video a couple of days ago and uh, I did it on a, a Friday after work. I was all excited because I was finally able to get back into doing some bonsai videos for y'all. Um, I do enjoy doing them and I'll tell you I was a little rusty. Uh, I had definitely a lot of outtakes in it, uh, <laughs> which I was excited to edit and show everybody because I, it's real stuff. It's, uh, it's actually me. I'm just a regular person who does bonsai and enjoys doing it. So I, I uh, loaded them into my, my editing software, and they loaded super quick, and I was excited because I thought, well, maybe the update worked really well for it. Um, no, I, I actually had my camera set to photo instead of video, <laughs> so I, I had wasted all that, uh, that time that I, I, I needed for doing that video, so this is a makeup video. Um, a lot of times I do some, some weird stuff and it doesn't turn out right, and then uh, the replacement works out even better. I had a lot of fun doing this video, showing you around the yard, and I, I hope that you enjoyed it also because um, bonsai, is, uh, bonsai is awesome. And uh, if you could just have fun doing it and not worry about what people are thinking about, uh, if, if you're acceptable enough to them, then you'll have fun. Do it because you like it. Do it because it's fun. You know, do it because it's a, um, a nice break from the rest of your day and you get to watch things grow 
and uh, make art with those things that are growing. So hope you're having fun doing that and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.